Welcome back to the show, everybody. It's John Pollock with you, and it's a big month for Bellator. No better person to speak to than the president of the organization who joins us at this time. Scott Coker is with us. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. As you undertook this this new position, Scott, you come in, Bellator, they wanted change. Was there an aspect of the one idea of should we just start from scratch, redo Bellator, even though you're coming into this organization that has five years in the marketplace and kind of balancing what's been built here, what can we build upon, as opposed to a fresh start, which some people were calling for. Did you have your own kind of thoughts of how to approach this where there is an audience, but you want to grow it to be that much bigger? You know, I think that um, we took a look at all the different options and we all agreed that we should just keep going with what we have. We have a great roster. Uh, let's add some, you know, pieces of gold to the roster. Uh, we have a great TV platform. We have great sponsorship. We just announced our uh, Life Different Miller uh, title sponsorship yesterday. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that. And uh, it'll be a great, they'll be a great partner for us. Um, and so all the elements are already in place. So, you know, to, to, to reboot and restart, the, the temptation was there. I said, hey, we can call it, you know, something like Spike Force. Uh, I'm, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we created all these you know, names. and, and But, you know, I, at the end of the day, I said, but the, the, the name is not going to mean what it does today uh, in 12 months. And in two years and three years, people are not going to think about Bellator as they did, you know, when they were doing the tournament formats and, and just kind of running it, you know, on a weekly basis. And talk to us a bit about how the relationship works right now with Viacom, because we heard before it was almost like two separate islands. Bellator was a program in there, and w- with the inclusion of yourself, it seems like this is now working as the machine that Viacom is. What is that process like uh, when it comes to dealing with Viacom and, and getting as much attention as possible on the product? I'll tell you, it's been a lot of fun, and, you know, uh, I've... I've I've had my own company, uh, as a, you know, when I was in Strike Force, uh, and, and I tell you, it's it's nice to see the commitment from a company as big as Viacom, all the way from the top down, mm-hmm. behind uh, mixed martial arts, and you know, they own Bellator, and it's something that's important to them, uh, but they are fans of it as well, and it's great programming for Spike TV, but uh, you know, the whole, the whole company is behind it, so it's nice to see that, um, and you know, then you get to. Uh, do a lot of fun stuff, sign bigger fighters, sign more fighters, do big productions on the, on the stage, just have a presentation that's, that's unbelievable. And then the marketing that goes behind it just has been uh, uh, amazing. And uh, when I first walked in there, uh, it, was, it was a little bit awkward because it seemed like the, the uh, I'm talking about Bellator, it seemed like the executives inside Bellator were not talking to the, uh, to the uh, members of the Spike uh, executives and and on a day-to-day, there was just a little bit of, of uh, confusion as who's doing what. Um, but, you know, we, we changed all that. We got everybody linked in. And now all the departments are talking to each other. And, and I, think you see, uh, I think you see some progress in, you know, what our show looks like, what it feels like, the fighters we're bringing on board, the tournament to the sport. And just as a company, you know, just running a lot smoother. What were the lessons you took away from the November 15th show last year in San Diego? There was... A, gi- a gigantic amount of interest for that show. There were people that criticized Tito Ortiz and Stefan Bonner, but you have to go with what business tells you, and there was a huge amount of people that tuned in for that fight. Where That, to me, was a real turning point because you came out of that show, I think, with a lot of people very optimistic about the, the future of Bellator. Well, you know what? I mean, this, this, is, this is how I feel about that. When, when you look at the the MA fight business, let's say after, you know, Strike Force, uh, we, we sold to the UFC. It kind of, it just kind of went down and became like a little bit of a low period where it just became like a hardcore fan. Yeah. And I think a lot of the fringe fans, and, and statistically it's proven that a lot of the fringe fans left MMA. And it was just for the hardcore. And um, to me, I want to go back and bring those fans, you know, back to becoming an MMA fan. And our formula has been, look, we're going to do legend fights, some fun fights, some big super fights. We're going to put on fights like Melvin versus Joe Schilling, something the fans that wanted to see. Uh, and then we're going to put on hardcore fights for the hardcore fans like, 
you know, Chandler versus Will Brooks. Uh, and, uh, you know, so we're going to have something for everybody. So when they turn into a ballot or a pen pole event, it's going to be in a big stadium. It's going to have the big production. Uh, it's going to have great fights and fights that fans want to see, uh, all the way to the hardcore fight fans. And, and really the mission is let's bring some of those fans back and get them engaged and, and let them see the, you know, the beauty of the sport again. Um, it's a real big hot button issue at the moment, Scott, reg- regarding drug testing in the sport in light of Anderson Silva, of Hector Lombard. How does this impact Bellator and it, kind of the spotlight being, I think, Sean, upon all of mixed martial arts at the moment? Are, is Bellator looking at more out of competition testing? Because it seems that we're in a period right now where simply testing guys on fight night, that's kind of the bare minimum at this point, I think, that we're. I think the next step needs to be taken. I, I agree with you. Something needs to be done. And, um, you know, it, it's not good for the industry as a whole. And believe me, Delta is not immune to it. Strike Force was not immune to it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, UFC is not immune to it, obviously, as you can see. Everybody is going to be impacted by this. And, uh, you know, if it was our champion that, that got busted for steroids, then you know what? Guess what? He, he is no longer, you know, the champ. And, and guess what? He's no longer able to make any income for himself. And we can't put him on TV and we can't fight him. It's a lose, lose, lose for everybody, you know. So it has to stop. And there's got to be uh, some action taken. We are now talking to a couple people and finding out some options. Um, but um, something has to be done because, like you said, one, uh, the, the outside, uh, the average fight fan looking in, uh, is going to get a bad taste in the mouth, uh, and uh, you know it's, it's something that uh, uh, that, that we got to clean up. Uh, just a few more minutes here, Scott. Just a, a few questions uh, to throw your way. Uh, I'm interested in your response to this because uh, everyone is looking at this Reebok deal in the UFC and how it's going to impact the fighters. I'm curious how much of a trickle-down effect there is in terms of how attractive Bellator is to a lot of fighters at the moment that are looking at pay based on ranking system and the inability to go out and get outside sponsors making Bellator that much more attractive for a lot of people that have that name value, have that equity already established in the space, uh, but somewhat restricted in the UFC now in terms of being able to fully capitalize on that level of attention that they've garnered. Uh, Do you think that the Reebok deal, in a strange, indirect way, uh, definitely benefits Bellator and the openness you have to, you can come in with whatever sponsors? Yeah, and I think that, um, that's a good question, and, and, and I don't really know enough about their Reebok deal, and I know that they're going to be distributing, you know, a lot of that money to the fighters. And so, you know, the jury's still out on that. I, and I, I would just like to speak to, you know, our league, and, and really I feel like, you know, we, we are open. Uh, if a fighter has their own sponsors, we encourage it. We think that uh, that's uh, our company policy, as long as it doesn't conflict with our, you know, our, our title sponsor, our TV sponsors. You know, they're welcome, and... Um, you know, the phone's been ringing. A lot of the sponsors that are, uh, I guess, are not going to be welcome there because of the uh, Reebok deal, you know, have been uh, calling us. We've been moving them into uh, the Viacom uh, sales team. And, uh, you know, I think you'll see a lot of, the, of those uh, endemic sponsors that have helped build the sport for the last 15, 20 years. I think you'll see them uh, in, in the Bellator case. Uh, in in terms of Mirko Krokop, what happened in that situation? Was it something that were you aware that he was in negotiations with the UFC? What what exactly happened that ultimately Mirko Krokop ends up back in the UFC instead of Bellator? Yeah, you know what? I mean, I had, I had a conversation with Mirko when I was in Japan, and uh, and that's all it was. It was a conversation, and and um, you know we 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 had set a certain price um, for him because you know we think that you know his value here. Uh, in the U.S. is at a certain point, um, and and then you know what he she chose to uh, go with the UFC, and I think that uh, um, you know his fighting in Europe is very attractive to him, and so you know I wish him luck, man. He's been a, a good friend for a long time, and uh, you know I uh, I hope he he, uh, he kicks some ass over there. And the final thing, I think this is a really interesting uh, initiative that that Bellator and, by extension, Spike TV has taken, and that's regarding Aaron Pico. And we go back to K1 when they had their under-18 division, and the idea was that Japanese mentality that we would introduce these fighters, and you would essentially watch them 
grow up and mature into experienced fighters. It seems like that's somewhat the template here with Aaron Pico that could pay giant dividends for for Bellator, that Spike TV is behind Aaron Pico. Uh, I think it's that kind of um, of out-of-the-box thinking that we don't always see in North American fight promotions that um, I'm just very curious how everything began with Aaron Pico and um, very interested to see how it all plays out over a several-year period. Uh, that's a really uh, interesting uh, prospect, and uh, we we got approached by um, a management company, and uh, my relationship with Bob Cook uh, when he uh, you know when he calls me, I always take the call, I always listen to him because here's a guy uh, along with Javier at AK has said, "Hey, look, here's a prospect you should really find this kid," and his name was Kane Velasquez, right? I've heard of him. So we we. Yeah, so he was, his first fight was with us, and then we didn't have a TV deal at the time. We didn't have any sponsorships. I was running a live event business. And uh, so, you know, they uh, they went to the UFC. And then the, the next prospect he brings me is a guy named Luke Ruckle. And the next prospect he brings me is Danny Fenton. <laughs> so when, when Bob or Javier or Dwayne call me and say, hey, this is, this is going to be the kid, I, I always listen. <laughs> so, and I usually sign him. Pretty good, uh, pretty so good batting happened. average. Oh no, it's like you know, probably batting you know, at least a thousand. You know, the, when they said this is a guy or this is a girl, they're they're they're, they're right. They, they have that eye for that. And uh, you know, when, it, when we talk about Ampico, the issue really was he was only seventeen years old at that time. And uh, we we thought about signing. We said no, let's wait uh, until he turns eighteen. And then what we'll do is we'll help him get through the Olympic. Uh, experience, and then he'll come fight. And what really, really attracted me to Aaron was, here's a kid that, you know, is a Olympic level wrestler. Whether he'll win Olympic gold or not, I mean, I'm hopeful that he will, but he doesn't. But if you look at his fighting skill set, the guy's already a golden glove boxer. So, he already has the boxing, he's got the wrestling, you know, like, there's already two of the major parts of MMA already pretty much, you know, engaged at a high level. So, I said, why don't we just mess with him, help him through the Olympic experience, and then when he comes out, then he'll, come start, he'll start his fighting career with Bellator after he gets out of the you know, Olympic experience. And that's exactly what we did, and I'm so happy that we did it because um, I think when, when you look back, most fighters, Dan Anderson or you know, Randy Couture, they, they go through that you know, uh, wrestling experience, and then they come out, and then they're looking for, for uh, a league or somewhere to work. Well, we we do the reverse. We're going to support them and help them through that time. And then when they're ready to come out, then they will and come fight for us. Uh, and, and don't be surprised if we sign some more athletes like this, uh, whether a lot of big wrestlers, judo fighters, um, even some Kyokushin karate fighters, you know, some other, you know, martial arts uh, that, that are really young, that uh, have a talent, uh, similar to what you see in, you know, in, uh, in Major League Baseball or, you know, the, uh, the college football experience, like the pros, uh, they're, they're right there, and we're going to start talking to everybody. Scott, thanks so much for uh, giving us this time. All the best. And to 2015, I think this is going to be a really interesting year for mixed martial arts and that that engagement of a lot of lapsed fans out there that are curious to see a lot of these fighters coming by that Bellator is targeting. Well, we're excited. And, you know, the beauty of this relationship is you'll be able to watch it for free on Spike TV. And uh, Friday night at 9 o'clock, tune in. We will be watching. Thanks a lot, Scott. Appreciate the time very much.